Hey econ students, this is Jacob Clifford. Welcome to Microeconomics Unit 2, practice questions number two. If you haven't already done so, please go get the ultimate review packet. You've watched the videos, you've done the summary stuff, you like my stuff, I mean, you're here, right? Get the ultimate review packet. It's the best way of saying, hey, thanks for making these videos, and it helps me pay the bills. Right now, I'm gonna give you several multiple choice questions. I'm gonna give you about a minute for every two or three questions. What I want you to do is pause if you need more time and click on the learn more icon if you need more help, okay? Thank you so much for watching, good luck. Okay, for question number one, we're talking about this idea of elasticity. Remember, elasticity shows how sensitive quantity is to a change in price. So for this one, it says there's a decrease in price from 10 to 8. So prices fell 20%. And then the quantity demanded increased. Remember, this is the law of demand, right? Demand didn't shift. It was just a change in the quantity demanded. It went up to from 10 to 15. So that's an increase of 50%. So prices fell 20%, but quantity increased a whole lot more than 20%. And so demand is relatively elastic in this price range. The answer was C. There's a concept here, it's called the elasticity of demand coefficient. It's an equation, the chain, percent change in quantity divided by the percent change in price. You can use that, or you can use something called the total revenue test, which we did in question number two. So for question number two, if the price is $5, then 200 people show up, that's $1,000 of total revenue. If they lower the price down to $2 per ticket, then 400 people show up. Notice, when the price goes down, more people show up. Price goes down, quantity demand goes up, right? That's the law of demand. The question is, how much has that change been? Well, notice, the amount of people who show up has doubled, right? So we had way more people show up, that's true, but since $2 ticket price times 400 is only $800 total. So the total revenue, when the price went down, total revenue went from 1,000 down to only 800. That means the demand must be inelastic, right? So the right answer is B, relatively inelastic. At the end of the elasticity video, I gave you a trick with your arms. Now, if you remember that video, then you obviously probably did really well on this question. A real quick bonus round here. What if the price of tickets fell down to two, but 500 people showed up, right? So again, the total revenue, well, the beginning was 1,000, and the total revenue ended up again at being 1,000. So what would that be? Well, that's called unit elastic, right? So unit elastic means that the total revenue doesn't change. So if the price goes up, in this case, the price goes down, total revenue stays exactly the same, that's unit elastic. Now, if you watch the summary video and you fill out the ultimate review packet, you know there's four different types of elasticity. Elasticity demand, elasticity supply, then income elasticity demand, and then cross price elasticity. Now, in this question, it's pretty complicated. You need to understand this concept pretty well to answer this. So let's give you the right answer and then go over the wrong answers. The right answer is E, an increase in the price of product Y will decrease demand for product X. And the reason we know that is because the cross price elasticity of demand coefficient is negative two. That means it's a complement. And so an increase in the price of Y will decrease the demand of another complement product 
uh, X. So for example, if the price of milk increases, the man will go down for cereal. So the right answer is E. Let's go over the wrong answer, starting with A. For A, an increase in the price of X will cause an increase in the total revenue for product X. We don't know. We don't have any information about the elasticity of demand for this product. All we know is that it's a complement with Y and that it's an inferior good. That's all we have information about, so A is wrong. B, product X and product Y are substitutes. No, they're complements, so B's out. C, product Y is an inferior good. Uh, we don't know that. In this situation, it said X income elasticity is negative 2. It has no information about Y at all. So B and C, you could cross those out pretty easy. And indeed, the demand for product X is relatively elastic. Again, I have no information about that. We don't know what will happen with a change in price of product X and how it will affect the coin demanded for product X. We do know that a change in the product X price will affect Y because Y is a complement. So the right answer is E. For question number four, we're talking about perfectly inelastic supply. So this is something that it doesn't matter if the price goes up, you're still gonna have the same amount produced. So think of this, you know, Vincent van Gogh paintings, perfect example. If the price goes up, we're not gonna get any more of those things, he's dead. So the right answer here, supply for product perfectly inelastic and there's an increase in demand, the right answer is D. The price will increase and the quantity will stay exactly the same. Right answer was D. Now, if you saw A and said the client supply will increase slightly, nope, that's, that's relatively inelastic, but not perfectly inelastic. Perfectly inelastic means it's a vertical straight line supply curve. So the answers weren't B or C, and E, the market will be at disequilibrium, no, um, it'll actually stay at equilibrium. Another thing you gotta watch out for this question is keep in mind we talked about the supply of the product, not the demand. The demand can also be a perfectly inelastic, like the demand for insulin, vertical curve, doesn't matter the price, people are still gonna buy the same amount, the quality demand is not gonna change. And that's why question E kind of alluded to that. If you, if you fell for E and you put that as the right answer, you were thinking more demand than supply. Okay, now we're gonna start talking about welfare economics, and it starts off an easy question. Question five, the difference between the price someone's willing to pay and the price they did pay is consumer surplus. C is the right answer. For six, you gotta take that concept and put it together with the market graph that you know. So it says uh, there's milk is at equilibrium. A decrease in the price of milking machines would increase the supply. So produce more milk. Supply curve shifts to the right, so we know the price will decrease and the quantity will increase. So the answer has to be D or E. Next question is what'll happen to consumer surplus? Well, consumer surplus is going to increase. The right answer here is D. If the price falls, I mean the difference between what I'm willing to pay and what I did pay, well, what I did pay fell, right? The price of milking machines lowered the price of milk. Now I can, you know, I'm willing to still want to pay, you know, $8 for a gallon of milk, but now the price has fallen even lower. I have more consumer surplus. The right answer on this one is D. The quantity consumed will decrease to 70 units. That is not true, so that makes it the right answer because this is true except. Let's make sure you understand the right answer here and, and what would actually happen. If the price is down here at five, people will want more. So there would be 120 units people want and we're only gonna produce 70 domestically. Now, normally, if this was a regular market, then that's exactly true. We'd be consuming less because producers are producing less. But we're gonna import some. We're gonna import 50 units from other countries. So we are gonna consume at 120, 
which is how much the new uh, consumption will happen at is 120. So the answer is not 70. Now, we are, if this question said the quantity uh, domestically produced is 70, that's true, but the quantity consumed is going to be 120. Also, look at the other answers. Domestic producer surplus will be E. That's true. The domestic producer surplus is smaller than it would be before, and producers are worse off in the United States. Domestic producers are worse off. Domestic consumer surplus will be A, B, C, and D, and it will be bigger than it was before, so total surplus will be bigger, and then the country will import 50 units. Those are all true. So A, B, C, and E are all true. In this case, D is wrong, and it's the wrong answer. Wait, it's the right answer. All right, now we have a tax question. We have to put everything all together. So it says, what's the consumer surplus before, consumer surplus after, and the total tax revenue? First, the consumer surplus before, it's easy, A, B, C, D, right? At a regular market, price is P2. The difference between what people want to pay and they did pay, A, B, C, D is the right answer for consumer surplus before. After the tax, well, the price goes up to P3. When the supply curve shifts to the left, price is now at P3, so the consumer surplus is A. So that's it, consumer surplus is A, so the only right answers can be either A or B. And then the tax revenue box, well, consumers spent P3, that's the new price consumers spent, but producers only get to keep P1, right? The vertical distance between the supply curves is the amount of tax. And so that vertical distance, P3 minus P1 is the amount of tax per unit, times the new quantity, Q2, gives you the tax box, which is B, C, E. The right answer? B. Right answer is B. You got it. A quick bonus round on this one. Where's the deadweight loss? Assuming there's no externalities, a concept you learn later down the line, where's the deadweight loss because of the tax? Well, the right answer is D, F. When the government comes in and they tax this thing, it leads to D and F to go to no one. It's not going to consumers, it's not going to producers. Also, if you've watched the summary videos and you fill out the ultimate review packet, you should be able to spot the total spending done by consumers, the total revenue that's received by the producers. You should be able to see all these concepts, all in these different letters inside the graph. We take this idea of taxes and then we start talking about elasticity. So we're putting elasticity and taxes together. Assume the demand for a product is relatively inelastic. So it's very, very steep demand curve. And the supply is relatively elastic, so relatively flat. So when there is a tax and the supply curve shifts to the left, what's going to happen? Well, it says per unit excise tax will cause. Well, the right answer here is consumers to pay a larger portion of the tax burden. The right answer was B. Again, in the summary videos, I explained this concept really well and showed you some side-by-side -side graphs showing this concept. But the idea is this. When the demand is inelastic, consumers are willing to pay it even if the price goes up. So the price goes up, right? Quantity is going to fall, but just a little bit. And so when there's a tax, consumers are going to pay a larger portion of that tax burden. This is actually a pretty hard concept. You're going to see it a lot in microeconomics class. So make sure you practice. One multiple choice question is not going to do enough. If you didn't get this one right or you need more practice, check out the excise tax video or actually go over this and I explain what happens and who pays more of the taxes. Definitely practice by watching the playlist video. For question number 10, we're talking about consumer choice and utility, total utility, marginal utility. First thing you have to be able to do is calculate
calculate margin utility. In this one, the chart shows the total utility for somebody eating pizza, zero, one, two, three, four, five slices, and the total satisfaction in utils, right? Their satisfaction points. So in this one, the right answer, no doubt about it, is B. B, the fourth uh, pizza, gives this person four utils. The right reason you know that it went from three to four, and three to four went from 19 total to 23, right? From 19 to 23 is an increase of four utils for that slice of pizza. Now let's go over the wrong answers. This person does not experience diminishing margin utility. Yes, they do, right? Their first one gave them eight, and later down the line, they only got additional four utils. So they're, they're getting less and less additional satisfaction, right? Look at the, the fifth one. The fifth one gave them additional two utils of satisfaction. So they're getting less satisfaction from each unit they're eating. And C's wrong answer too, because we already calculated it. C is the fifth slice gives them only two units of satis additional satisfaction or two utils. And then the total utility decreases the constant rate. No. Um, first of all, it's not decreasing. Total utility is increasing and it's not increasing it at a, uh, at a constant rate either. So it's actually going up at a, an, at, a, at a decreasing rate. So D's wrong and this person will eat five slice of pizza. I don't know. We, have, we don't have a price. If we knew a price and we knew their satisfaction, maybe we could start calculating how many they should actually eat. We don't have that information yet. That's it for this unit, but you definitely still need to practice. If you haven't already done so, please go get the ultimate review packet. It's going to be more practice and more chances to learn this stuff. Hopefully you did well in this quiz. Please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time.